Hello, welcome. Sorry, I forgot to turn the microphone on. <laughs> Great. Anyway, um, hello. Welcome to <laughs> the show. Uh, this is about the Art Eco Framework. Uh, I just told you uh, when the microphone was off. Uh, that this, uh, you know, I'm going to talk about music specifically because that's my kind of thing. Uh, but I want you to realise that you can apply this to almost any creative art. Uh, you know, filmmaking, animating, uh, book author, uh, chef, training, um, game developer, anything like that. Okay? Anyway, so last week, uh, <laughs> this looks like, uh, you know, um, a horror movie. Uh, but I, I built this up for you bit by bit. And if you watched me do that last week, then it's not nearly as daunting as this looks right now it's actually only three things believe it or not um and this is really just how they interact and how we you know massage them to to make things work um and that would be in the vault the paid vault um hang on eight seven um uh, if you want to do that you can go to click just click.com slash buick show put in the coupon buick show to save a shed load of money um and you'll get access to all the uh, back issues past present and future Plus some extra things you can't get anywhere else, like the no-fail marketing. Uh, so click justclick.com slash Buick Show. Put in the coupon Buick Show. It's the same as the end of the URL. Uh, and you'll be amazed. Uh, or delighted, anyway, I hope. Um, hang on, 87 we said. <coughs> it's going to be a while I cough. Right, there we go. Oh, 87, there we go. Yeah, so if you missed me building this one by one and explaining each bit, then you need to go to the paid vault and get the back issue of that show. Anyway, it basically ended up with, uh, you know, 15 steps, uh, or sorry, the steps that we could take over 15 weeks. Um, or was that the 15 things and that's the 16? Anyway, whatever way around it was. Um, yeah, but basically this is a 16-week plan. Remember, I'm, I'm doing phase two. I've skipped phase one because I'm an arrogant, um, confident bugger. Um, and I want money. I don't want fans. I want money. So I'm building a six, seven figure music business here. You can do what you like. If you don't want to go this hard, then you do phase one. Phase one is the easy, you know, lovey dovey build up fan kind of thing. Um, and that will only be available in the paid course of the Art Eco framework. But I'm showing you a phase two because I just want you to see, um, you know, see what I'm doing and how well it's working for me, you know, in kind of in action. And I'm starting with phase two, so here we are. As I say, if you want to do lovey-dovey stuff, then, you know, buy the course, do phase one. That's a seven week before you get into this. And then obviously there's a level up after this as well. But this is basically how we're going to build a six-figure, six-seven-figure music business. Okay, as I say, I'm talking about music, any creative art really. Okay, so we worked out a 16-step plan. I could put it into the kind of diary-looking thing like this, which is actually two of these, or I could actually stick it in a diary like Google Calendar, however you want to do it. I mean, or you can just have a checklist and tick it off. However you want to visualise it, but, you know, basically you can see that there are only so many things to do and we can fit it all in 16 weeks to make it happen, which is what we want to do. A um, couple of huge takeaways from last week. Uh, remember that the audience collaborates on basically everything that you do so that it makes it extra special for them. Um, and you can also ask them to send in stuff to, you know, to use in, uh, you know, either in the marketing or the Hall of Fame or in, you know, in, on the scrap wall or, uh, you know, on the, um, what's that, uh, that halogen balloon thing called anyway, the, the Zephyr, um, you know, with the pictures on or whatever you want or, you know, <laughs> imprint them on Chinese balloons and, and, you know, light them up into the sky, whatever you want to do. But the important thing is, uh, you know, not being flippant, is that the audience is part of the art, okay? This whole system relies really on the audience being part of the art it's not about you being uh, you know a one-way performer and just doing your shit um it's about the audience interacting and being part of it so as i say you know the basic process that underlines everything that we do is we're basically just working the crowd which is what we always used to do as musicians and performers the only difference is now that maybe we're doing it digitally instead of in person obviously this can still apply to in person as well if you want but you know the big opportunity here is that we can do it digitally um uh, without having to go anywhere 
uh, and reach you know millions more people. Um, also, the second thing, as I just said, is that this is very much a collaboration with the audience. Okay, um, anything we can do to get the audience to participate, we want to do that because then it's extra special to them. Anyway, something interesting came in today. Okay, <laughs> this is how hot and fresh this is. So somebody posted uh, what somebody had posted about what somebody had posted, uh, which is <laughs> the research of uh, you know how much the music streaming services pay, and they do a little thing where they uh, they've come up with this figure for a minimum wage, minimum monthly wage of one thousand four hundred seventy-two dollars. That's what they think is a minimum monthly wage to kind of pay your rent and food. Um, so that's not really any luxuries or holidays or anything probably like that, because um, that's about what 12k a year or something um anyway so they're all on here and at the most at the moment napster are paying the most um and to you know make this you know miserable living um on uh, napster you'd have to get 130 th sorry 130,000 um what should we call them um I'm going to call them views. I know it's listens, but anyway, 130,000 views um, per month to make this paltry figure, okay? And on the other side of the scale, YouTube, uh, you'd need 2.4 million views, wow, um, to make the same paltry figure. So obviously YouTube, uh, you know, the advantage of YouTube is they have the mass. So the potential is you that there probably are um, you know, 2.4 million people on YouTube or who visit YouTube uh, who would actually listen to your music. They actually have the scale um, to do it. But nonetheless, uh, yeah, because I think they have something like 2 billion views a day or something. Um, but the, you know, the, the trouble is, is that to get access to the 2.4 million people who may well like what you do and they're probably on YouTube or visit YouTube, uh, is is getting at them, getting to them, and also the other big thing with all of these, all of these services really, is none of them really let you talk to your own um, audience. Okay, you don't get to know the names and emails and phone numbers of the people who watch your video. If you're lucky and they comment, even if they like, you don't know who they are. If they comment, um, then you know, you might know their username on Facebook. Uh, which, in which case, you know, maybe you could, you know, um, chat to them. But, you know, the, none of these services give us any real way of getting access to our own list, you know, to our own audience. All they do is that when we release a new track, we hope that the same people may see a second track or whatever it is. Okay, now obviously you can get them to subscribe to your channel or whatever, um, but again, you know, it's it's passive. Uh, we can't normally, I don't think with any of them, I can remember, I don't think we can email or PM or update uh, other than YouTube, uh, you know, that we've done something and you now i know on, on youtube we can if they subscribe to our channel you can send a subscription notification so honestly i'm not sure about the others because i don't really use them uh for this very reason um but youtube do let you at least you know do you get you access to the people who, who who have subscribed to your fan page but you can only you know do very limited things with them you still can't email them you can PM chat message them. If you try and PM t chat message too many of them, uh, you'll probably get your account banned because uh, they think you're a spammer or something. So they don't really encourage you getting in touch with your own audience. Okay, um, so it's a very passive system. They're in control. We can do crap all about anything pretty much, um, other than post new content on. And when we post new content on, that's probably about the best um, kind of ping uh, that we can hope for. Uh, you know, um, so, so we're in no control of our audience, no control of anything. So that's the first reason why I don't like these things. Uh, the second thing is, is that, uh, you know, with YouTube, you have to get 2.4 million views to make a measly, um, you know, 1,400 quid, um, or dollars. And 130,000 views with Napster, but obviously they're a lot smaller. Um, so, uh, you know, it, it, it's a case of, um, you know, whether your people... Uh, yeah, would even find you really, um, and then all these guys in between, and they all have their pluses and minuses, and, and just to, you know, highlight it. Spotify, 
uh, you know, 0.038 of a P. So it's not even a, a cent uh, per, per, per view. It's a third of a cent per view. Um, they have 140 million users, so that's great. Nothing like YouTube, but, you know, top of the bar after YouTube, below YouTube. Um, half of them are all free scrounging bastards uh, who don't want to pay anything for their music. Thank you. That's really great of you. Um, I'm sure you lovey people will be super pleased with that. Um, so, you know, 43% of them are actually willing to pay anything. It's like, what, $10 a bloody month? Come on. Um, for all of your music entertainment. What's the matter with you? Anyway, um, to get this measly $1,400 per month, you'd have to get 380,000 views. Now, that isn't an issue. This is the point of tonight's show, I guess. Getting 380,000 views isn't an issue. Well, it is an issue, um, but it's possible. Okay, it's possible. But let's be realistic and just remember that it's you who are going to get these views. You're not going to get 380,000 views just because you are on Spotify. You are going to have to be doing something externally to Spotify to make that happen. Even if it's just getting on the right Spotify playlist, it's still you who is arranging that, um, you know, placement on the playlist with, you know, effectively the influences of Spotify. Okay? It's still down to you. Spotify are not going to do crap all for you. Okay? Um, so, it's down to you. So, 380,000 views is certainly possible. It's, it's actually, not surprisingly, quite a lot of work. Okay? It's actually quite a lot of work. Um, so the issue that I have here is that um, you have to basically do that every month. Now, again, they, brilliantly, they don't really let us get hold of our own audience. So we certainly can't email them or anything. Um, and we don't really know who, who they were when they came. You know, we don't know anything about them. So um, the problem that I have is that we have to do this every month to get this poor, measly 1400 bucks. Um, and in reality, the only real way that we're probably going to do that is if we release, effectively, a hit single, a hit single, every month. You know, the B-sides are not going to cut this. They're not going to get that amount of audience unless you're, you know, actually already have... Uh, you know, the following. And if you have the following, then you don't bloody need Spotify. So, this is a chicken and egg kind of thing. So, um, if we're going to all this much effort, because getting 380,000 views uh, for your, you know, next month's hit single uh, is not impossible. It's not easy, though. Um, but if we're going to this much effort, why are we doing that all for 1,400 quid? Only hundred bucks, sorry. Um, so <laughs> I have a problem with it because we can't really do easily. We can't easily do upsells and you know sell them our own merchandise and you know stuff like this. We've got no control really over anything that's happening, and it's not our platform. And they can kick us off if they when they feel like it because they think that we've done something, um, you know, grey hat to get this many views. So, in one hand, they don't want us to be this successful. And on the other way, the only way we can even make half a living, you know, uh, come um, crumb crust, crust? Crumb crust, sorry. Uh, you know, kind of food living is by doing that. And honestly, that would involve some engineering. You know, it involves work. Uh, stuff that you have to do to get that many views on that platform. Okay, and again, we're in no control of really what's going on or what they do or if they're going to ban us or not. So, yes, there's 140 million people on there, but honestly, I don't care because I only actually want 2,000 people, but 2,000 people who actually truly like what I do. I don't care about the other 139 million, 8,000, whatever it is. Um, I just want 2,000. Okay, this is what I showed you in like week two or three. So if we can get 2,000 real fans who are willing to pay for what we do, then we don't need any of this nonsense. Okay, now I'm not saying, let me be clear, I'm not saying don't do any of these 
paper, I'm saying do all of these. But what I'm saying is don't put your best stuff up here uh, in entirety. I would do t like one minute teaser versions or even less if they, if I get away with it on the platform. Um, or, uh, you know, a video version, you know, teaser of 30 second to one minute thing. And then if it's a video, then I've also got the option of, you know, visually at least, uh, you know, sending people to my HQ, okay, which we discussed in week four or five, uh, which is, you know, your website where you actually sell your own stuff. Uh, and where you invite opt-ins and where you build your list with your relationship because you know who the heck they are. And, th and then if you've got some kind of list building thing on there or some kind of messenger bot or some kind of web push or some kind of SMS updates or all the other ways that you know we'll talk about that you can interact with your users then you can ping them on demand and tell them something new uh, or something good is going to happen uh, you know very soon and would they like to come like our e-geek for instance um, so uh, you know, so we're going on all this effort, why the hell don't we just do it ourselves? So, as I say, I'm not saying don't be on here, do be on here, because, you know, there are people on here. But what we want to do is we want to drive them off of here into our own HQ, and then these people can go play with the donkeys. Um, now, the other thing that happened, uh, I thought this picture was too big, so I'll just do it over here, um, was... Um, so this is the same streaming thing down here, I think, uh, or maybe it isn't, or down the bottom it is. But anyway, this was this was about record sales or CD sales, sorry, record sales. How old am I? Um, although record sales are coming back. Anyway, um, uh, yeah, if you do your own CD and you know and it's at these kind of prices, then how many would you need to sell? Uh, you know, after the divvy, you know what they take off you. Um, to make this measly paltry living again. Now, obviously the problem is that we we believe that most people don't still buy CDs, and probably most people don't. <laughs> again, I only actually want 2,000 people who really like what I do, and if they really like what I do, they probably want my CD, because uh, it's got everything. You know, it's got the artwork and it's it's physical and they can play at any time. They don't have to be on the net. All this kind of stuff. Okay. So, I don't know. Anyway. But if there are still any people left in the world who buy CDs, um, and in theory there must be, because otherwise, um, you know, CD Baby wouldn't exist. Because um, they wouldn't be selling anything. Anyway, but on CD Baby, not a particularly good service. I don't really like them that much at all. Uh, I'm sure they try hard and they're nice people, but not really that proactive or great. They don't really do us any favours again. Um, and they're taking 33% of everything we do. So that's nice. Um, uh, anyway, 175 units a month. So that's not very many, is it? So let's round it up to 200, you know, on average. So if we can sell 200 CDs a month, then we can make our minimum wage uh, here after we've given them the cut. Now notice that... When we sell them directly, we may, obviously we're making 100%. It's not actually not true, actually, because you've got to get them pressed. Um, but then we have to get them pressed here as well. So it might be a dollar or two off of this. Um, but we only have to sell like 100 units. Okay, and, and that's at 12. So we make it 15. It could certainly be 100. So we can just sell 100 CDs per month. Then, you know, we actually have a business. And we're making whatever it is, 15,000 a year, which is a five-figure business. Okay, so so that's good, and obviously we're making the most money if we do it ourselves. Now again, what do all of these places offer us? Well, we can argue that iTunes is very popular. We can argue that Amazon's very popular. So again, I'm not saying don't put your stuff on there. I'm just saying don't make that your only outlet. And also, I would say uh, have a severe advantage if they do buy it direct. So if they buy it direct. Maybe these are personal signed copies, for instance, or come with your. Um, you know, your lyric book or whatever or some other thing or access to some, you know, secret video pages or anything. Don't offer it to these buggers. Okay? Um, we want to get them off of iTunes and Amazon into our own HQ where we can sell them direct and to keep all the money. Apart from the one or two bucks to make them, uh, you know, to press the CDs. So, um, maybe CDs are dead. Maybe they're not with your audience. You know, I don't know. Um, 
you know, maybe if you're, you know, a young rapper and all your audiences are, you know, young young people, then maybe they don't buy CDs, although, I, you know, I, I don't know. But there's probably some people out there um, who still buy CDs. There are people out there who still buy vinyl, people who in specifically buy vinyl. So there's a whole heap of DJs out there who want vinyl. They want vinyl. So if your thing is clubbable, if I can use that word, it's trying to make me sound very old again. Anyway, uh, whatever it's called these days, if your think music is the kind of music that DJs would use or they'd play at a venue and they would appreciate vinyl uh, or CDs, then, um, you know, then that's another um, um, outlet for you. Okay? Anyway, it's either way. Because if you can do 100 CDs a month and you're doing them, then you can make your minimum wage there. So I think this has broke it down. Oh, no, this is streamed. So this is the same, um, yeah, the same kind of aggregator, uh, sorry, the same data as we saw this might be last year's actually um that i just showed you in the other diagram so i don't know why i'm scrolling down um but yeah but who the hell is that now um oh youtube yeah uh okay so it's got a bit better apparently then but yeah back then you needed 700,000 plays um to make this measly amount of money uh because they're paying you 0.001 so i guess these days they put it up have they um, YouTube, yeah, they put it up, so they've gone up from. Oh no, they haven't. It's gone down. So last year they paid us. How do they work this out then? Uh, last year they paid us point no no one, whatever I just saw, and now th this year they're paying point no 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 six. But somehow, oh no, that's right, and that's t right. Okay, so the amount that they're paying out has gone down, and now we need to get two point four million views. Uh, last year, or whenever this was, we needed 700,000 views, which is obviously less than a million, uh, because they actually paid us more. They paid us 0.0018 of a cent. Wow, generous guys. Um, to, uh, yeah, so that, so that would t we didn't need 700,000 views to get a minimum wage. Um, anyway, that was last year. Uh, but this year, it's gone down, and we need more views. So that's great news. Um, I'm being sarcastic, in case you didn't know. Um, so, so streaming, yeah, great. A um, lot of work, a lot, a lot of work, uh, just to get a measly wage. Um, CDs, it's actually on this page here. Um, you know, if people still buy CDs, pretty workable, 200 units a month. Um, you know, if you've got an actual fan base, you know, not so bad. But are they going to buy a CD, which is, you know, typically 10, 12 tracks every month? So that means, you know, it's a different set of people every month. So, you know, it's not super easy. Um, but it's it's workable. It's there. You can still make your minimum wage if you're selling even 100 units a month. However, you do that new old whatever. Um, so, so what's the point? Um, uh, I'm not going to show you that. Um, I'll put that in the advanced course. Okay, you can, you can screen grab it. You've got it. Um, it may not make so much sense to you. I'll explain it in the paid course. Um, anyway, what's the point of all this? So, I guess the um, you know the big point that I'm trying to make. Oh, I've got the wrong month now. There we go. Um, is um, yeah. What's the better answer here? Okay. Um, because you know we can see. Yeah, we we can see that you know streaming is a bit kind of you know meh, um, however you pronounce that, um, <laughs> which I don't know. Um, streaming is a bit meh, uh, and and CDs, um, you know, uh, are they still you know, you know, do people still buy them? Okay, um, so you know. What what can we what, what what can we do? What's what's our better option here? Well, we've we've already done the better option. I told you in week two or three or whatever, um, and it's to realise what we're selling these days. Okay, which I've covered on other shows. Um, 
Okay, and and you know what I try to get across to you is that we don't want to be a commodity. Oh heavens, there we are. Um, that's the one thing we don't want to do. So anybody who treats music like a commodity, they can go play with the tortoises. Okay, uh, not interested in that. We want to build a very special relationship with a very elite set of people, only 2,000 of them, um, who are willing to pay for our experience. Okay, I don't mean our um, you know, skill or knowledge. I mean uh, to pay for the experience. Okay, so that's what we're selling these days. Okay, and the experience, as I've told you, you know, millions of times, um, is about, uh, you know, basically we're selling emotions. Okay, um, emotions that they have that we can share um, that make them feel, uh, well, make them feel, really, um, either way. Um, could be happy, could be sad. It's just, you know, feeling. Um, that's what they're really paying for. And, yeah, the big thing now, really, is that the format has changed. Okay, we all agree, with, agree on that. So, you know, it's not CDs anymore. Uh, I put it to you, it's not streaming either. Um, and um, so what is it? Okay, uh, how, do we, how, do we, how do we do this? Okay, well, it, you know, it's right in front of you. Uh, what's happened, okay, the digital revolution, basically, is the internet, really. So all we need to do is use the internet as the new format. Now, as we've discussed, uh, that can be, uh, you know, a multitude of things, but it can be live streaming. Um, it can be any way that we can do e-gigs, which is say there's some specialist tools um, I don't know why I've written liver there. Uh, some specialist tools to do e-gigs and stuff. Lots of tools to get interaction. Um, and, you know, and it all starts, really, with your, with your HQ, with your website. Okay, that's where you can put or announce, at least announce everything that you do. Uh, because we want people to come back to our own property because we control it. So no matter where we're doing all this clever stuff, of streaming and e-gigs and interaction and whatever, we always want them to get it from our HQ, nowhere else. Okay? Any, um, you know, any, I'm even going to write that down, any third party um, service, uh, you know, that gets us exposure, number one rule, get them off of it onto your HQ. Okay, that's your sum total job, is to get people off of any of these third-party places and get them to your own HQ. Okay, that's how important your HQ is to you. Okay, uh, because on that, we control the complete experience. And we control it, and we're not going to get banned or whatever. And we can build up the relationship and we can get the list building and the opt-in and whatever else we can do, messaging, pushing, you know, and whatever it is, web push is, uh, is what I'm trying to say there. Um, that's what we need to do, okay? So, you know, what is, you know, the experience? How do we, in what, you know, formats and what ways and how do we deliver you know, these emotions. Well, that's that's going to change. So even if I do tell you something today, that may not be what we use tomorrow, and you need to, you know, be aware of that and keep ahead of that, okay? It's always probably uh, going to be audio and video, even if it's, you know, simulated and direct injected into your brain with probes through your eyes um, or your nose. Uh, that'd be better. Uh, visual, um, yeah, even if it's probes through your nose, injecting it directly into your brain, it's still going to end up as being you know, audio and visual, okay? So we're definitely in, uh, you know, for music, we're definitely in the audio and visual, you know, arena. They're the senses we're trying to do. Um, um, you know, um, there probably is some good uses for smell of vision in, in music, but I, I you know, it's not a road I want to go down. So... I'm going to stick with audio-visual stuff, okay? So, what all I mean by that is all we're ever going to have to create 
uh, you know, basically is music and videos, okay, and, and art, and you know, static art, but that's, you know, that's visuals again, okay, but it could be static, it doesn't have to be, um, you know, video all the time. Um, so, uh, where am I getting to? Uh, so, uh, yeah, as I say, you know, golden rule there, um, I'll let you read that for yourself, uh, and as I say, these, you know, whatever we're doing here, we're going to control them and announce them from our HQ because because we can do, um, you know, the relationship and the list building, okay? Because um, that's basically, you know, our business, okay? Um, so, you know, the question is, is basically how can we create this experience, okay? So, I guess we'll put that there. So we have to decide what the experience is. Now, um, if it's a simple, straightforward experience like the one I've listed out in the 16-week plan, now available in the paid vault, um, this isn't actually that hard. So I'll try scroll the mouse without moving the thing. This isn't actually that hard to create as an experience because all this really is, is basically, um, you know, six web pages now you may not be a web person and it doesn't matter there's a load of tools that can you know take all that pain away but you know it, it on its simplest or you can just get you know somebody on fiverr to knock them out or whatever but you know in the simplest things uh you know simplest way it's basically six pictures okay six full page pictures i'd call them a4 pictures i shouldn't call them a4 because that's a print thing but i think you get you know get the un the, the understanding that it, you know if you look at a book a big book and you look at a whole full page um you know that's that's the image that's the picture of the photo that i'm talking about and obviously it's got words on it and it's got buttons on it and it's got text on it and it's got images on it and it might have video on it and it might have video players on it but basically it's an image okay it's a big image and you can make it more of an experience by not making it look like a web page <laughs> <laughs> okay, and that's not actually that hard because what you do is you create the image and then you give it to somebody, if you don't do it yourself, you give it to somebody to turn into a web page. Okay, but if you use any sort of, uh, you know, a page builder from from the scratch, um, you know, like ClickFunnels and all the other crappy things like that, um, and WordPress and, you know, anything. Okay, anything like that is going to make you basically design in a grid. Okay, in in squares. Okay, or you know, to some sort of square guide guideline. You know, a grid. You know what a grid is. And the one thing that we do not want to do <laughs> is design in a grid. So if you just simply create the graphic first. Uh, because then there are no constrictions. The only constrictions is the mind. Okay, then you can make it any shape, any color, any layout, any wicky wacky thing. You can use furry animals, uh, you know, for your interface. Anything the hell you want. Um, you know, just create that full A4 page. Um, you know, basically in a paint program. Okay. Um, if you haven't got a paint program, there are free ones on the web. There's one at pixelr.com. Okay, we'll do everything basically that Photoshop does. Okay, there is actually even a, uh, you know, officially a Photoshop online, but I've forgotten the name of it. Um, not done by them, uh, but, you know, done by somebody else. I think it's, I can't remember, it might be 20 quid a year or it might be 20 quid a month, I can't remember. Um, you yeah, know, but, but Pixelr is free. Okay, and it will do everything basically that Photoshop will do. It doesn't have actions and styles, I don't think, but it has all the layers and the resizing, and it, you know it's very easy to make a composite video. Uh, you know, you can cut bits out and move them and resize them and recolor them, reshade them. Uh, yeah, that kind of thing. So, or you can do it on paper uh, and scan it in. Okay, I mean, you know, I know that's very, um, you know, old tech. It's not low tech, it's old tech. Um, but you can literally do it on paper. Or you could just take your camera and photograph stuff. Okay? 
uh, is that you make a montage out of you know anything you want. Um, uh, montage, yeah, you know, anything you want. So I mean, you know, you're creative. Think of something. Uh, but basically, I'm just saying, you know, create a full A4 page design uh, for each of these six pages. So yeah, I'm saying create six of them, and then, then uh, basically use that as the background. Nearly every package in the world I can think of will let you set a background uh, image, and then you put your stuff on the top. Then the grid is fine. Okay, so. Again, I'm not saying don't use click funnels or WordPress or whatever. I'm just saying don't design it on those packages. Do not design it on a grid based um design you know, page builder. Do not do that. Knock it up in a paint program or draw it on paper and either scan it in or photograph it, whatever you want to do. Or it could be you know, physical hard you know, hard objects. You can make it out of cardboard boxes. I don't care. Whatever you want to do, make it up crisp packets, uh, you know, on the floor, and you do an aerial photograph of it on the top of, a, you know, be careful on the top of a ladder. However you want to do it, uh, you know, skywrite it in the sky with a helicopter. Whatever you want, I don't know. If helicopters can skywrite, but anyway, if they can, uh, but you know, create this background photo. Um, uh, let me put a photo in there um, to create your your background image and then you can use whatever you want over the top uh, and it doesn't matter if it's grid or not I mean everything basically is grid these days apart from convertory which isn't uh, but it's, fr it's free form but it's you know has its own issues um, so you know grid or not uh, and um, you know and actually lay over uh, you know the buttons or you know, videos or audio players or whatever it is that you need to do. Okay, or quizzes, uh, viral quizzes. Um, yeah, these are all just, you know, little widgets that you can put on any web page. What I'm saying is just make the background, uh, you know, as you want. And, and also bear in mind, you know, that these, um, you know, these, um, you know, things can basically be shaped, okay, because they don't have to look... Um, square yeah you, know, you can paint uh, you can do an s as your frame of the page and then put everything inside the s um to give it a shape okay it doesn't have to look square okay that's you know that's the main reason why i want you to do it as an image is, is that it doesn't have to be in a grid and it doesn't have to look square um and there's no you know limitation if you want it to be furry in one point you can okay because it's an image you can do whatever you want and you know, and these days uh, we can make these things efficient enough um, to load really quickly, uh, that it doesn't matter if the whole background is an image. Okay, um, even on mobile, you know, and there are ways of you know handling this. You know, I don't want to get into the technical things of web building, but yeah, you know, basically you can cut the the big image once you've got it into into squares, and then each square loads independently and quickly. Uh, even on a slow connection and we can certainly optimize the images to be you know efficient to load um, and all that kind of stuff um, so they're just technical craps and, and the whole point of everything that I'm trying to say to you is, is that the technical crap doesn't matter okay uh, if there's something technical getting in your way we just walk around it okay but these days there's nothing there's really no legitimate reason for you to be um, halted by any technology because somewhere there's a free one an easy one uh, you know a, a YouTube tutorial on it uh, somebody giving it away for free uh, or somebody will help you to do whatever you need to do for five dollars uh, on you know sites like Fiverr or whatever obviously there are better sites than Fiverr as well like Odesk and stuff where you might be paying somebody sixty dollars or ninety dollars but yeah we're talking about building a six-figure business here at some point we have to decide uh, you know that is worth investing in and we do what we need to do but you can start simply build it up um, you know the furony here is that uh, you know probably one of the best uh, you know implementations of this would be uh, you know a minimal um, you know sparse design on plain white okay it's just that none of the grid builders you know none of the grid based page builders will inspire you to create that 
but it could be you just have you know some three millimeter dots or something um on a page and that's all there is i mean you know you can do whatever you want as i say it's a photo you, you can do whatever you want anyway maybe i'm nuts and maybe you don't want to do that and that's fine but all I'm saying is that I'm not going to use a page builder to create mine because I don't want it to be a grid. I don't want a website looking interface. OK, I remember um, back in the day that Prince, I think it was Prince uh, and Mike Oldfield. I remember those two. Uh, yeah, they did some very, very creative multimedia interfaces. The, the Mike Oldfield one was, was particularly out there. Um, and and they were great because, you know, that was that was part of the art you know he, he whatever the, the subject of Oldfield album was about that was basically his interface i can't remember what it was now this was like 10 20 years ago uh yeah and then for the time it was just astronomical um and and literally uh, all that made that happen was that instead of using any kind of builder or software or anything to create it he made a picture and he went this is what i want the background to look like now make that into a you know into a game effectively in his case um um because that's what i want uh but you know he just he gave them the picture uh, that was the sum total of his input they needed to do and then somebody else goes and makes it work into an interactive whatever but he had complete artistic freedom because he made it from starting from a picture so don't use a tool a web tool or WordPress to start the site. To get your paint program out and do it. Yeah, if you want to handwrite the, the text, then just do that. Okay, we don't need to use a prescriptive set of fonts that come bundled with the package. Get the damn paint program out. Use your imagination. Make that part of the emotions that we're selling. Yeah, you know, make it part of the project. And again, you know, beautiful you know, user interaction. We could have half a page where we you know the bottom of the page or wherever it is is all snapshots that the fans have sent in okay once it's a picture we can do what the hell we want okay we just want to write their names out in hand you know uh, we can do that it's a picture okay uh, if we you know we want to do it on paper and scan it in or photograph it do it that way Anyway, that, that stopped me being, you know, super creative there. Um, but w what we're basically saying is that, you know, in my case, I'm going to create six pictures, okay? Not super sounding hard, is it? Create <laughs> six pictures, okay? And then, then we use those as the background, okay, for our pages, okay? And we use whatever we want to use, I really don't care, um, to make those uh, pages. Okay, to, to make them into, you know, actual interactive, you know, pages with, you know, audio and video and whatever else. On. Um, but the background is, is, the, is the page. And then basically, you know, we make six of the things. Okay, not exactly hard. And they'll link together with the clever stuff that somebody else can do if you can't do it, um, you know, to make them actually into, you know, pages which link to each other, okay? Not our problem. We don't, we're not, we don't care about the tech. The tech will basically, you know, take care of itself or somebody that you can pay $5 to will make it work for you, okay? Tech is not an issue in the 21st century, for heaven's sake. Basically, most tools in the world are WYSIWYG. You know, what you see is what you get. Every interface is generally drag and drop. You want something somewhere, you basically put it there. Okay, not really hard. You want to change the font, you select it and you change the font. It's not hard, is it, really? Anyway, you're probably a, you know, um, a master web designer and you're wondering why I'm you know questioning you on silly technical stuff but i'm just trying to you know make sure that everybody understands that tech is not the issue here so we create six uh, you know images we turn them into pages interactive pages we can put our audio and video and whatever on there um and we do you know webby stuff to make them link together and all that now now i've got six pages i can then basically translate this diagram onto these six pages okay so page one is basically 
uh, the confident finished song. I'm going to be lazy and then just actually even copy that over there because um, it won't fit. Okay, uh, and that's basically you know the roll of page one. I don't know how it looks. Um, and let me just take the font down a bit just so it might work, might fit. Yeah, sort of. Um, not exactly. There we go. Um, so that's the role of this page. So this page would do whatever we, you know, we want to do. So um, I don't even know if the details really matter, to be honest. But uh, just in case they do, um, for instance, you know, we, we want this to be frictionless. In other words, we want them to enjoy it um, yeah, without any effort. Oh, why isn't there one pointing to the right? I think. Oh, yeah, oops. I don't know why I selected then. Hang on. No, what am I doing? There we go. Oh, actually, I've probably got one here. Um, no, we haven't. Okay, let's go back here. Let's have that one. So basically, yeah, there's going to be an audio player on here, right? Something that plays that finished song. Okay? Uh, let me see if I can turn that around on its ass. No. Oh, come on. What's the matter with me? There we go. Oh, no. I had it and then I mucked it up. You straight now? There we go. Okay. So we have some sort of audio player. Okay? Because uh, we want them to hear the song you know, straight away. But, you know, don't... Why would we leave it there? If they like it and they want more, basically we want to offer it to them and say, well, look, if you, if you want more, if you want more, if you don't want more, that's fine. Bugger off. Don't mind. Do what you want. But if you want more, you know, do something to get more. Now, it's up to you how you do this, whether this is a link to more stuff or whatever. Or maybe this is actually, you know, the opt-in. Okay? Now, if they don't want to opt-in, they're just not going to. I don't think anyone is going to be particularly, uh, you know, offended uh, that they're going to, you know, come around your house with an axe uh, because you ask them to opt in the list. If they don't want to opt in the list and get news of when the more stuff's coming, then that's fine. But we can offer them more stuff and then we can ask them to opt in. Or I might even do it the other way around. I might say, if you like that and you want news of all the stuff that's coming, then, you know, opt in and I'll tell you when the new stuff's coming. That's it. It's as simple as that. And if they, you know, scroll down a bit further or look down a bit further, then they can get more free stuff instantly. Okay? Now, this, you know, will change and be updated as we go along, because we haven't got anything else, you know, in that week. Um, but we can request them to, you know, interact with us, like our fan page, you know, whatever you want to do. Um, you know, a kind of passive commitment there, if, if you want to. Um, again, if they don't want to do that, they won't. If they don't like the thing, then they're not going to do anything. doesn't matter. So it doesn't matter whether it's there or not. If they don't like this, nothing else will happen. But the question is, if they do like this, then what else do you want them to do? Well, I want them to be on my list so I can tell them about my other stuff. So what am I going to do? I'm going to ask them. If they want more stuff right now, I'm going to ask them and say, you know, uh, you know, help me out, like my fan page, uh, you know, see um, some the cover art on the fan page, uh, you know, take my quiz, interact with the thing, tell me what you do and don't like, tell me what you want to hear next, um, you know, tell me what your what emotions it reminds you of, you know, tell me your story, you know, the the golden rule that we said before, collaboration, okay. That's what we want. So basically, you know, effectively playing them the song is working the crowd. And then what we want to do most, uh, more than anything in the world, is collaboration. But if they want more, we're very, very happy, you know, basically to, to list build. However that's done. Again, it can be, you know, passive or soft. But, you know, email would be fantastic. Okay, you can do other clever ways like SMS and uh, messengers and... Uh, you know, push messages and stuff. It's the most innocuous opt-in ever. You know, it's, it's click this button and you'll get all the news. That's it. No email to pop in. Just literally click the button. Don't need to be on Facebook. Don't need to put your email in. Don't need to stand on one leg. Nothing. Just click the button and you'll get all the news you want. 
Okay, including the links to tracks. That's called Web Push. Okay, it's the simplest thing in the world. You can get it for free, I think. I forget the site that does it. There's loads of sites, but there's one particular site that I use that I liked. Um, or you, you know, you can, you know, use a service or use a paid service or whatever. Yeah, there's free and paid, um, you know, for everything everywhere, really. And it's just up to you, basically, you know, how seriously you take it, whether it's got the features it needs or not. Um, and and that kind of thing, but yeah, you know, and and if it works the way you work, okay, I, I the what things I like you may not like, doesn't matter. All, all we're saying is that there are options out there, and we can use them. So I'm going to stop there because I've gone on for too long, and I've been too creative and too arty. But look, that's page one of the sequence, right? We know what the sequence is, okay. We've worked it out here. That's what it looks like. You know, graphically, I say, if you watched me build it one by one last week, it won't be scary. Go to the paid vault and get it. Um, this is basically the things we're going to do over 16 weeks. Uh, and as I say, you know, th although this looks scary, there's only really you know, half a dozen things on there. So now we're creating the experience, which is basically our website. As I say, you can build it in anything the hell you like, but start with a graphic. Do not start with the builder because it will make you design in a grid. Okay, look what I've done here. You know, it's just terrible. It's a grid. Don't want to do that. It's not arty. Um, anyway, however you want to do it. Um, and this is page one because we're playing them a finished song. And if they like the song, then we ask them to subscribe for the news and we ask them to collaborate in the next thing that's coming. Okay. We ask them to collaborate in the next thing coming. Well, guess what that's going to be? That's going to be page two. Okay. Now, the only way they can generally get to page two is if they collaborate with us on page one. So this is now effectively being a kind of a funnel. Now, yeah, I'm not going to hide these pages, but it's just that I'm not going to link them uh, on day one from the home page. Okay. Um, so yeah this this is creating a kind of a, an experience because every time they you know we interact with them we send them to the next thing in the loop you know exactly as i've explained in this okay we, they hear the finished song um and um yeah we can do some variations of that uh but yeah basically we're asking them uh, if they like the song Okay, basically that's all that does. Um, only a percentage of them will. That's fine. This is the purpose of this is to find the people who like it and the people who don't like it. The people who don't like it, <laughs> I don't want to talk to them anymore. Okay, bye. The people who do like it, well, guess what? I'm going to offer you the extended version uh, of this and I, I really want you to interact with me on doing it. So, well, guess what that is? That's going to be page two. Okay, so you can see, you know, just how it works. So all we're really doing with this experience is we're doing it. Now, even, you know, if this, whenever it is, I'm not sure. Yeah, even if this is, uh, you know, a, U a YouTube video, okay. I don't know why I have the button down there, that's stupid of me. Even if this is a YouTube video, don't send them to YouTube. Embed the YouTube on your video now people who find the video on youtube that's fine so in the description you link it back to your hq because and get uh you know something else um video two as well would be the simplest thing or you know the songbook or you know um a you know a photo or uh, you know whatever so we give them a reason, a good reason, to come off of YouTube uh, and come back to our HQ. Okay, and if we're doing YouTube for the video hosting, then that's fine. No problem putting the video on YouTube. I just don't want everyone to watch it on YouTube because I can't do anything about it. I don't know who they are. I can't really control. Uh, you know, w if they know about my other stuff, I can't really talk to them in a two-way fashion. I, I mean, they can leave a comment, but. It's not really the exact conversation that I want to have with them. Ultimately, I want to get them, uh, you know, onto, um, you know, some kind of e-gig system platform where I can actually talk to them in real time and where there's an event happening. And I can't do any of that on YouTube, okay? Uh, I love it, but I can't do anything with it. So 
I get them the hell off of YouTube. Okay, people discover it on YouTube, that's great. But in the description right below, I say, come to my website um, to get, you know, for some reason, to get more, you know, to, to talk to me, to whatever. Um, you know, to see what other people are saying, to, you know, to read the reviews, to hear the extended mix version. You know, just come up with good reasons why they should come the hell off of YouTube and come to your website. And then just embed the web, the video on your website. Okay, so these web pages, you know, the, your experience is on your site, on your domain. Okay, um, there are other places to, you know, host videos that aren't YouTube, which might be better, like Vimeo or whatever. I'm not asking you to sign up to them. I'm not saying you have to have your own video hosting. Um, you can use YouTube if you want. I'm just saying don't point the videos at YouTube. You know, don't point your links at YouTube. Point your links at your web page with the YouTube embedded onto your uh, system, okay? And this is the same basic principle all through the thing, okay? If, you, if you're putting teaser songs up on uh, Spotify or whatever, make sure that they come back to your HQ, your website, for some other reason. We want to get them the hell off of Spotify so that basically we can do this and we can do this. Okay, we want to play the, sorry, we want to work them, we want to work the audience, work the crowd, and we want them to collaborate, okay? That's our prime goal, that's our job, that's what we do, and we have to work on a platform that lets us do that, and most of the platforms don't let us do that, and at any time they can kick us off, and we're competing with all the other people who are on there. On, our, on my web page, I am the only person for sale on my web page, okay? So I get them to my web page and then I don't have to compete with all these other buggers, like you, in fact, probably. Um, so that's why we have to get them to come to our own property, okay? I suggest you start it with a, with a picture in a paint program because, you know, instantly we're working with any tool like this, you know, instantly I'm creating square bloody boxes and circles and I'm laying it out in a symmetrical bloody grid. I don't want to do that. It's not actually what my art and my music is about. It's not the experience I want to give. I don't want it to look like a web page. Okay? Do you understand? We're selling the emotional experience. We're, we're creating a relationship where they collaborate with us on our art. That's a kind of a unique kind of process and feeling, and it's not available on any existing platform. I'm sure it will come from somebody soon, but if we just make our own website, we can do this, we can do whatever we want, and it seems like it's impossible, but it isn't. You create the picture in a paint program, scan it, draw it, whatever you want, photograph it, don't care, and then we use that as the background for the page, and they won't have to look square, they can be any shape, you can do it in columns, you can do it as a cartoon, you can do it anything you want, um, if you do it, you know, uh, on paper, on, you know, in a paint program, then we just technically take that picture into our page builder, and then we can start using the crappy little grid thing to, you know, to put buttons on it, and to put videos on it, and to put audio players on it, and to put our viral quizzes on it, and all that kind of stuff. But it won't look like a web page because the background isn't. Okay, so that's, oh uh, yeah, I'm not going to labour that point because it's an artistic decision. Maybe you want it to, you know, look like it's built in a in a five pound, you know, web page builder. I don't know, um, but I don't. So I'm going to, you know, just flip the creative lid off um, and do it. All I'm saying is that it's technically possible in a super simple way uh, to just to create the image first in a paint program uh, and then just to use it as the background for the web page and then you can use whatever crap you want um, to actually build the buttons and the videos and, and whatever. So that's it. I've gone on too long. I always seem to go on too long with this. Um, I'll see you next whatever it is, next Thursday, sorry, um, uh, when we're doing the next exciting installment. But I think this was pretty whoop, um, so I hope you enjoyed it. Talk to you then. Bye for now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.